I'm Coaster Bro from the Coaster Cuzzies podcast. I tricked In The Loop into buying me a season pass to Dutch Wonderland. Here's how I did it. So every year In The Loop does a fantasy football league with a bunch of different creators. The league's really fun to be in, with the main draw being the loser has to do an In The Loop fantasy football punishment. In years past, we've seen losers have to go to Fun Slide Park in South Dakota to ride a kitty coaster. We've seen Drew the Intern go open to close by himself to Peppa Pig Land. And the loser this year has to do a Worst of Las Vegas, which is going to be a great video. A lot of people know about this league, but what they don't know is that the winner actually gets a prize from it. Essentially, In The Loop will pay a couple hundred bucks to make a video based off of the winnings. The idea is that you take that money to enhance your day at a theme park. Now I live in Kansas City, and I decided not to renew my World of Fun Pass for the 2022 season. In doing so, I was forced to look at buying a season pass to Silver Dollar City for my home park and Adventureland, both are equal distances from me. And when I looked at the price of that Adventureland season pass for the premium pass of over $400, I knew I had to come up with a plan here. And this was the summer I was planning to go to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is full of amazing amusement parks. And I wanted to go to Dutch Wonderland. I wanted to revisit Idlewild. I wanted to go to Kennywood. And I wanted to go to Adventureland for free RT and just to visit myself. And what I found, the cheapest option to buy a pass to get me into all of those parks was actually Dutch Wonderland for the price of about $169 per pass. So maybe getting that Dutch Wonderland pass was a smart idea in the first place. But this video will be about will be about my Dutch Wonderland pass and what it got me during the summer of 2022. Today we're here at Dutch Wonderland. As you can tell, I was very excited for the first Palace Entertainment Park of the trip. What was nice about the pass, it did get us premier parking for free, so we didn't have to park way over there behind the trees. We just parked real close and got to walk up to this beautiful entrance with the fountains, with the castle. Love that you walk right into a gift shop, very funny. And then we got our season passes processed, very easy, very friendly admissions people, and uh, we're ready to go within five minutes. We were at the park a little early, so we went to the right and waited at the rope drop just by the railroad tracks. We had to get those three coasters in to start because I wasn't about to wait in line for kitty coasters. So as the rope dropped, we went straight to Merlin's Mayhem and was on one of the first trains. This ride had a much better theme than I anticipated. Really loved the theming throughout the queue and even in the exit platform. And I was really impressed by the safety of this ride, how the loading process was, keeping kids behind closed doors. You could tell safety was a priority at this park. The ride itself, this is my first time on one of those SNS family inverts, and I thought they were really fun. It was a great ride. Next stop of the day, I had to get the shame out of the way as we went over to Joust. My plan was to get on this ride and be the only person on the ride, get the credit, move on, get there early enough. Turns out I got the front seat and then they just filled up the rest of the train with children and, um, you know, I uh, felt a little bit selfish there. But that's just kind of how the loading process went. So beware of that. Think you're getting that Zen ride by yourself. Think again. They're going to wait for children to come up and then you're going to feel like a fool in that front row. We then moved on to the last coaster of the park, Kingdom Coaster, which formerly used to be called Sky Princess, which I think is a better name. Wow, this was a surprise. I thought this was going to be a standard family coaster. Turns out it had just a little bit more, a little bit more forces. It was smooth and actually a really great ride. I also love the paint scheme on this with the blue and purple. You don't see that on wooden coasters. So definitely re-rode this a couple times and thought it was a great ride. The one ride we needed to get on, maybe even more than the coasters, was Dragon's Lair. You get into these log flume type boats, and then you float around a lake. There's a dragon, there's a lair, there's a Popeyes, there's a lot going on. But just enjoy this on-ride footage of my wife and I on the ride. We're here on Dragon's Lair. Some sort of dragon, and there's a lair. But really, this ride should be called Popeyes the Ride. Woo! Yeah. Can you find Tucker the tortoise? Where is he at? I think I found him. He's not even in the tall grass. <laughs> <laughs> 
think this might secretly be the best ride at Dutch Wonderland. The music is great. We're just floating around randomly in a lake. And there's a dragon and a layer. The dragon moves. The layer is just three plants and two frogs. And backside of water joke. But mostly Popeyes. So Dutch Wonderland might be the best transportation ride park in the US. I don't really know who could challenge that to be honest. You've got that dragon's layer. The sky rides very good. It interacts really well with the roller coaster. We've got some good footage of uh, riding the sky ride and getting some video of that. But they also have classic cars uh, like the antique cars as well as some other boat attractions, a train. Smart because most of the family can ride all of those. Oh yeah, and they have a monorail. So, really cool. And then at the back of the park, they have Exploration Island, which has even more rides and different attractions. That's a great angle. <laughs> there you go. Did I mention the employees were friendly here? And also, this part of the park is just super beautiful. This whole park, man, I just love it. They also have like a tiny, what felt like a Dino's Alive. Real small, but real effective and not an upcharge, which I appreciate. Overall, it was a great visit to the park. I was super surprised on many aspects. The entertainment was good, the rides were good, the atmosphere was even better. Will I come back to this park? The answer is yes. I love this park and I'm glad that I was able, for one season, to at least say I was a season pass holder at Dutch Wonderland, one of the best family parks in the nation. The next stop with our Palace Pass was to another beautiful, family-friendly park, Idlewild. Now, I had been to this park before and gotten all the coaster credits, and I didn't need to re-ride any of those. So the main focus was just to take in the ambiance, take advantage of the pass, and get on Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, which I was not able to do on my last visit. A common theme I saw at both of these parks was that their entertainment game was insane. The last two hours of the day, they had a meet and greet out here with five characters, which was a pretty wild sight to see. And then this park also does have a pretty decent collection of gentle flat rides and some thrilling flat rides with these flyers. So it's not completely a children's park. There's enough for you to do if you want to engage in that. While we didn't spend time riding the roller coasters, they do have two unique ones. You've got Rollo Coaster, which is the 1938 Herbert Smeck family wooden coaster. Darts through the woods, and in 2018 they added these weird trains. You do weirdly have to be under 260 pounds to ride this, and they do weigh you though, so that's kind of a weird thing. Also has Wild Mouse, we'll let the riders describe it. The ride formerly operated at Wiener Prater and Alton Towers. It is a Vekoma Wild Mouse, and it's unique. It kind of hurts a little bit. My two favorite rides are actually in the back of the park. You go over this bridge in this nice little creek, and then you're at Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. This is a trolley ride that has a live actor on that is like your tour guide and then you're interacting with different Anyways, set pieces. Let's check it out. Believe. Would you all like to make believe with me? First of all, let's all close our eyes nice and tight and make believe that Daniel is getting on trolley with us. No peeking neighbors. There he is. You guys can open your eyes. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Time for neighbor day. It's a special day when we all do something nice for our neighbor. Prince Wednesday's castle. You're ready. Oh, look, there's Prince Wednesday now. Say hi to Prince Wednesday with me. Hi, hi Prince, Prince Wednesday. Wednesday. Hi, Daniel. Hi, neighbors. Happy neighbor day. Let's all come, come along, come along, along to, to the neighbor hugging song. Came to the hug and song, and Mr. McFeely brought us all sunflowers. 
That was his special favorite day, Speedy Delivery. Are you ready to sing? I think we are. Here we go. I think I'll make a snappy new day. Daniel Tiger is a must ride at the park and I am glad that I came back to ride it. Now the back half of the park has a bunch of classic kids rides. This miniature turtle ride is super cute, but my second favorite ride in this park is easily the adult hand cars where you go on this train track and you just pedal with your hands around the track. In a previous In The Loop video, the boys all went to Idlewild together and did time trials against themselves. My wife is very competitive, wanted to see if she could beat them, so here is her attempt. Shout out to my wife for doing this to the Inloop channel. She's hauling. I don't have a watch on her, but uh, I'm pretty sure she stacks up against this Inloop team. I know she's beaten in, uh, Drew the intern for sure. Flying. Looks like you boys got smoked, hit the gym. With under an hour left of park operation, we wanted to check out the Storybook Forest. We were really surprised at how well staffed it was with actors, and it was a really fun walkthrough. Here's some of our favorite moments from the attraction. Into the one room schoolhouse. Mm, teacher says dunce in the corner, not a good move. <laughs> Kindergarten teacher read me this book when I was in kindergarten and it shaped my entire personality. Nice! That's a good idea. <laughs> Did you come when you were a child? Now, first time visiting. Now, whenever you open it, you get a What's over there? Look at that. You guys got a pet Okay. I'm just kidding. Grandma, I'm very careful. Grandma. Okay. You know, it might not be grandmother. It might be something with the long snow, three years and big teeth. You're not saying there's a wolf over here, is there? I think I have to go see. Go see what? Grandma. Well, yeah, she's oh, inside. She's sick today. It's a, not a wolf? No, it's my grandma. Okay, okay. That's a wolf. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Is it sleeping? Be very quiet. It is sleeping. Okay, okay. Shh. Peter. Oh no. Very quiet. <laughs> Uh, things are not looking good for Jack. Termination for sure do convey, but you will not pull the sword from the stone today. The next day was a two-part day for us. We spent the first half of the day at Waldemere, and since we had the season pass, we figured why not get a couple hours in at Kennywood, get a few rides in so the next day can be uh, you know, a little bit less stressful as far as trying to get on everything. Now, Kennywood is one of my favorite parks in America, so I was super excited to see the new renovations for 2022. Now, I hadn't been to Kennywood in multiple years before Steel Curtain was even built. I heard some people say that Kennywood's been slipping the last couple of years, but with the new refurbishment and the great park atmosphere, I didn't see a single trace of that. Now, Steel Curtain had been closed for about a month leading up to our visit, and I needed the new credit, but I knew I wasn't going to be getting it. But when we pulled up at the park, I actually checked my Twitter, and the park announced that Steel Curtain had opened 33 minutes ago. Luckily, we hopped in line before anyone really noticed that it was open, and we had a 45 minute wait on a one train operation. I tried to detach myself emotionally while we stood in line as I knew it would probably just break down in the middle and I wouldn't be able to get to ride it. Eventually we were on the stairs of the station, we got in the station, and I was on the train going up the lift hill, credit acquired. Now, I wasn't expecting much from this ride, mostly because I just told myself in my head I wasn't gonna get the credit. And I was pleasantly surprised. For 11 inversions, it was not very nauseating. It was actually quite graceful. 
And when I got off the ride, I told myself I could get back in line and ride this again. I just didn't want to wait 45 minutes to do that again. We had about an hour until park closed, so our plan was to hit some rides that would have longer waits the next day. So we hit the old mill, the classic dark ride, cute ride, but nothing I need to re-ride again, especially if it's not a walk-on. We then went over to check out Skyrocket on a short wait. It used to be one of my favorite rides in the park. It's definitely dropped a little bit, but it is a solid ride. I do wish that the, this was the Skyrocket that got cloned and put it in many parks instead of its younger brother. We then had just enough time to go ahead and hop in line for Phantom's Revenge and get a ride in on that. Purple gives it a great look and it's running as good as it always has. Couldn't have asked for a better two hours to knock out some rides and prepare ourselves for the next day at Kenny Road. This season pass gave us the opportunity to rope drop the kangaroo. So glad that this ride is back. It looks great. Shout out to Kennywood for actually bringing it back. Was it the plan the whole time? Who knows? We then of course had to give Noah's Ark its due respect. A great walk through attraction. But honestly one of my favorite parts of the rides is sitting there on the observation deck and checking out all the rides. And Thunderbolt was looking good. It had the new paint job for this year and was running as good as it ever has. Really one of the most underrated wooden coasters out there. Let's just take it in its glory. ride I'd never ridden before was the auto race so I had to go check out the antique cars. This ride opened an hour after park opened so we were actually one of the first people to hop on the ride. My wife drove us. She was a great driver. Great to finally ride a Kennywood Classic. Then we skipped across the midway to Ghostwood Estates, the Sally Dark Ride. Targets were working great and this is a ride I never skip when I come to Kennywood. Welcome. Welcome. Come in. I've been waiting for you. I use the word classic a lot at this park, but we got to ride the classic whip, which is a must every time you come to Kennywood. And then we also uh, took some time to walk across the park to check out the creepy laughing Sal. <laughs> Next ride was the Jack Rabbit, which I don't know if a city loves their local coaster more then Pittsburgh loves the Jackrabbit. It's been the first big coaster of every Yenzer for the past hundred years. It's such a special ride and great to ride on it. For real though, look how cute all these families are riding. Everyone has a little next to them. It's like everybody's first coaster. It's so cute. Our last ride at Kennywood was actually probably the most underrated ride of the whole dang trip. We paid, I think it was 10 bucks for both of us for 30 minutes to go on the paddle boats and just do paddle boats on the lake. Got great views of Steel Curtain as well as other parts of the park, as well as Racer, as well as Jack Rabbit. And it was just a really relaxing, kind of romantic way to end the day. Just kidding, that wasn't the end of our day. We had to get potato patch fries. The bacon cheddar, really one of the best theme park foods out there. Mm. And that was the last park of our Pennsylvania trip. Wow, what a great way to end it. I tell you what. The last day of our season pass was spent at Adventureland for the free RT event thrown by the In The Loop podcast. You might have heard of them. This was a fantastic day. Meeting a bunch of internet nerds I've been talking to for what seems like years now. We all started off going to Monster for ERT. I got six cycles on this thing. I know some people that got well over 10. Wild. Such a great ride. So smooth. Such great hang time through some of these inversions. Second half of the ERT, I think I just kind of stood around and talked to people for most of it though. And I was getting kind of dizzy. The park opened up and our first stop to try to beat the GP was to go to Phoenix, the spinning coaster. Hey, it's a little fun ride. I love this ride. 
I think this is my favorite style of spinning coaster that is not called Time Traveler. We then walk by the construction walls to ride underground and look at this thing. You can't see it? What is it? Yeah, you can't hear it over the paper somebody's writing. <laughs> it's like a typewriter took out of space. <laughs> After listening to the sax man, we rode Dragon Slayer, which spun us to the moon and back. A prevalent theme at all these parks was the entertainment. These guys were just Vikings walking the park promoting their new rides, all just costume characters being like, hey, new ride coming next year, we'll be ready. Then the second best part of this event was the free food, the free beer, and of course, the robot on a Segway. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? In the loop? I'm in the loop. He's in the loop. All right. We're in the loop. Are you loopy? I'm out of the loop. He's out of the loop. Those were my park visits I got from my Dutch Wonderland Pass, which essentially was a Palace Park Entertainment Pass, courtesy of In the Loop. Some of the pros of this pass uh, got to see some really great parks. I would say the palace parks as a whole are beautifully maintained, the parks are pretty, and you can definitely see that there is a kind of connecting character that you can see at all those parks. I also want to give a shout out to all of the staff, they were fantastic, and one thing that did surprise me, the entertainment at palace entertainment parks, very good, especially at the more family oriented parks. Now as far as cons of palace entertainment parks, one thing that I would like to see is a price consistency just on the season passes. A platinum pass at Adventureland costs an arm and a leg more than a Dutch Wonderland pass does, and they essentially get you the same thing. As a Kansas City local, I would prefer not to drive to Lancaster, Pennsylvania to get my Adventureland season pass. Also something the parks need to work on is just consistency through the parks. When you get a season pass, the system does not talk to each other from park to park. It was very common that if I pulled up to the parking booth and told them I had a Dutch Wonderland pass, I had to talk the employee through what that meant, and they usually had to call a supervisor or another employee to figure out how to essentially comp parking. And essentially at every gate, what the park had to do was comp a ticket for my season pass. So if I was Palace Parks, I would probably go ahead and get a season pass system that talks to every park in the chain. That being said, overall, I, I do recommend a Palace Park Pass, especially if you're going to those Pennsylvania parks. If it wasn't for this pass, I would not have visited Iowa and I don't know that I would have been Dutch Wonderland either. So I do want to thank the In The Loop team for kind of letting me into this fantasy league and just generally not being good at fantasy football and letting me win that first year that I was at it. If you aren't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I've been watching In The Loop videos for many, many years, and they are my favorite creators in this amusement park space when it comes to this long form YouTube video thing. So make sure you give them a follow if you haven't already. And if you like this video, you'd probably enjoy my TikTok content. You can find that at Coaster Cuzzies. There you can also find full trip reports from all the parks I visited on these trips. We also do have a weekly podcast to check out. You can find that anywhere you find podcasts at Coaster Cuzzies. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the internet.